Did you know over 2 billion cups of coffee are consumed worldwide every single day? That's a whole lot of beans. Have you ever wondered where your morning cup of joe actually comes from? Let's dive into the fascinating journey of a coffee bean, from its humble beginnings on a tropical farm to the rich aroma in your cup. If you're a fellow coffee lover, grab a cup, get comfortable, and like this video for more awesome coffee content. Where coffee is grown, the journey of a coffee bean starts in a narrow strip around the world, known as the coffee belt. This special zone lies between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, where the climate is just right for growing coffee plants. Countries within this belt, like Brazil, Colombia, Ethiopia, and Vietnam, are some of the biggest producers of coffee in the world. Each of these places has the perfect mix of rain, sun, and temperature that coffee plants need to thrive. The coffee plant. Now let's talk about the coffee plant itself. There are two main types that we drink, Arabica and Robusta. Arabica beans are the more popular of the two and are known for their smoother, more refined flavor. They prefer higher altitudes and cooler temperatures, often found in mountainous regions of countries like Ethiopia and Colombia. On the other hand, Robusta beans pack a stronger punch, both in flavor and caffeine content. They're hardier plants, able to grow in warmer climates and lower altitudes, such as in Vietnam and parts of Africa. Arabica plants are a bit like the delicate, high-maintenance stars of the coffee world, needing just the right conditions to flourish. Robusta, however, is the tough supporting actor, less fussy about where it grows and more resistant to diseases. Despite their differences, both types of beans play essential roles in the coffee we end up enjoying. Whether it's a smooth, mild Arabica blend or a strong, bold Robusta, the journey from the farm to your cup starts with these incredible plants, nurtured in the rich soils of the coffee belt. Harvesting the cherries. Harvesting coffee cherries is like picking delicious ripe berries. You have to do it at just the right time. Farmers watch the coffee plants carefully. Only when the cherries are perfectly ripe, usually a bright red color, will they start picking. There are two ways to harvest coffee, hand picking. Farmers carefully pick only the red cherries one by one. This way, they make sure only the best cherries are used to make the most delicious coffee. Machine picking. In some places, big machines help farmers gather the cherries much faster. These machines shake the plants and collect all the cherries, even if some aren't quite ripe yet. Whether harvested by hand or machine, the coffee cherries need their next adventure. They aren't beans yet, remember? They're still little seeds hidden inside the fruit. It's time to find the beans and get them ready for their transformation. Processing. Getting to the bean. Remember, our coffee beans are still hidden inside those red cherries. Now comes a super important part called processing. It's like taking the cherry apart to get the treasure inside. There are a few different ways to do this. Dry processing. The fruity way. Farmers spread the cherries out in the sun to dry. The whole cherry, the fruit, the bean, everything dries together. This makes the coffee taste sweet and fruity. Wet processing, the clean way. Big machines squish the cherries to get the beans out. Then the beans get a nice bath to wash away any leftover fruit bits. This makes the coffee taste bright and clean. Honey processing, the in-between way. This is a mix. The cherries get squished, but only a little bit of the fruit sticks to the beans while they dry. This gives the coffee a sweet and fruity taste, but a little cleaner than the dry method. No matter how it's done, processing is a big step in the coffee bean's journey. Now, it doesn't look like a cherry anymore. It's a greenish bean ready for its next adventure. Green beans to roasted goodness. After all that work, the coffee beans are finally ready to travel. Big bags of these green beans get shipped all over the world to special places called roasteries. That's where the magic really happens. Roasters use giant, super-hot ovens to transform the beans. Imagine those green beans getting toasty warm, changing color from green to light brown, and then a delicious dark brown. This roasting process does two amazing things. Smells incredible. That wonderful coffee smell you love starts to appear as the beans roast. Flavors unlocked. All sorts of yummy flavors are hiding inside the beans and roasting brings them out. The beans can taste chocolatey, nutty, fruity, it all depends on where they were grown and how they're roasted. Roasters are like coffee chefs. They carefully choose how long to roast the beans to bring out the very best flavors. Once the beans are perfectly roasted, they're ready for the final step in their journey. Your cup, your perfect cup. 
After the beans have traveled the world, it's your turn to make the perfect cup of coffee. The way you make your coffee changes how it tastes, so let's talk about all the fun ways to brew. French press. This fancy glass pot lets you mix hot water right with coarsely ground coffee. It makes a strong, bold cup. Pour over. Do you like watching things drip? Pour over is where you slowly pour hot water over medium ground coffee into a filter. This makes a smooth and balanced cup. Espresso machine. If you like strong, concentrated coffee, an espresso machine is your friend. It uses pressure to push hot water through finely ground coffee quickly. No matter how you brew it, a few things are important for delicious coffee. Fresh beans. Coffee tastes best when the beans are freshly roasted. The right grind, how coarse or fine you grind the beans depends on how you're brewing them. Hot water, but not too hot. Almost boiling water is perfect for making coffee. It's fun to experiment and find your favorite way to enjoy this amazing drink. Enjoying the journey. The next time you take a sip of coffee, take a moment to think about all the places it's been. From a sunny farm, through careful processing, to a skilled roaster, and finally to your kitchen, it's been on a long and amazing trip. Coffee isn't just a drink, it's a story. Every cup tells about hardworking farmers, clever techniques, and even the different flavors of places around the world. Whether you love a bold morning cup to get you going or a cozy afternoon treat, coffee connects us. People all over the world enjoy this special drink. With so many ways to make it, you can find your perfect cup. So, as you enjoy your coffee, remember its special journey. Imagine the sunshine where it grew, the hands that picked it, and all the care that went into making that delicious drink in your hands. It makes your cup of coffee even more enjoyable. The world of coffee is so vast, with new flavors and brewing methods to discover. Was there something in this video that surprised you? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this journey, be sure to check out more fascinating stories about our favorite foods and drinks. I hope you enjoyed learning about where your coffee comes from. Now go enjoy a delicious cup and appreciate the long journey it took to get to you. If you love coffee as much as I do, hit that like button and subscribe for more coffee content. Do you have a favorite coffee origin or brewing method? Share yours in the comments below. What other foods or drinks would you like to see a farm to cup journey about? Let me know.